the first thing we have to talk about with this conversation is um, the political or uh, government hermeneutic. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know what um, hermeneutic is, a hermeneutic, well, the term hermeneutic um, is, um, is basically means uh, the science, or the, hermeneutics is the science of literature, the science of reading. Uh, so kind of like from the kind of gets its name from the Greek Greek god Hermes, the god of um the god messenger. So basically, yeah, hermeneutics is a science of interpreting text. And so when we use the term hermeneutic, it is a principle or a framework in which we interpret the scriptures or interpret a literature or interpret a text. So for example, um, in the blog post I wrote about um, reading while black but not under attack, right? There's a black hermeneutic, an Afrocentric hermeneutic to reading the text. And so the hermeneutic I'm asking about, like why is the government asking or what are they proposing in regards, what are they looking for, what qualifies something as religious exemption? And so I have this article here, and it says, and the article is from Osler.com. Um, so it's like a, a legal, a legal website that covers issues in in Canada and the U.S. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And it says, "What is a religious exemption? An exemption from receiving a COVID nineteen vaccine may be available where an individual cannot be vaccinated based on a ground protected under the code." Most requests for human rights based exemption from mandatory vaccination will be based on creed. Under the code, creed can include religious beliefs and non religious beliefs, belief systems that resemble religion. Among other things, an individual's claimed creed must have a connection to an organization or community that, pro- that professes a shared system of belief. To support an exemption based on creed, an individual must provide n- and must provide objective evidence that their <laughs> that their claimed creed religion prohibits vaccination against COVID nineteen. Many religious leaders and authorities have publicly and repeatedly urged vaccination against COVID nineteen. Additionally. Personal preferences or philosophical objection to vaccination will not support an exemption. In its September uh, 22, 2021 policy statement, the Ontario Human Rights Commission stated that while the code prohibits discrimination based on creed, personal preferences or singular beliefs do not amount um, sorry do not amount to a creed for the purposes of the code. So what'd you, what'd you think about that, Joel? Um, I, well, first off, I thought the human rights declaration was, was literally like propaganda. Um, because technically my, my instinct is like, wait a second, shouldn't you be ruling on a case? And, and maybe it's again, I mean, a lot of people say the human rights court is a kangaroo court. So I'm trying to apply some, some, concepts of take uh our episode um a couple of weeks back or well, a couple of months now almost where we were talking about the law uh with chris christopher kinsinger kinsinger i was like i'm gonna say his last name wrong if darnell doesn't jump in here <laughs> um <laughs> uh he talks about no precedent is better than a bad precedent Right. And and the reason I bring that up is that I was thinking about, oh, shouldn't a court or a law system be making a judgment based on a case in front of them? And and so for the Human Rights Council to make this like declaration, uh, I thought it was that's why my instinct is, is propaganda. It's them supporting their government without actually having a case that they're ruling on. Now, as I said to the very beginning. Maybe the fact that it's very much a kangaroo court and doesn't follow the regular rules of court law systems uh, is to where maybe there's a little bit more validity to that statement. Um, but I, I say that because they, they've basically sort of made it sound like, oh, you can't make a human rights claim without really putting substance other than saying, well, because the government said so. <laughs> 
Like to me, that's the substance of their argument. Um, so, so like, like I mean, do you think they're really like? So you're saying that they're not trying to create, um, find religious exemption? Well, I, I would say their their statement, like the the argument against, I would say the human rights violations, is, you know, per- perfect example, um, would be if somebody has a basis for religious exemption just let's go use the the abortion right if their position is i as a we're against abortion and personally i do not want to use a single product that is involved using um you know any sort of abortion or aborted fetal cells or whatever in their testing Mm -hmm. that is a religious conviction i i would say based on the definition you read as long as i can get people to validate that that's a you know, let's call it a Christian position or, or within my religious, the fact that I hold to the conviction of I'm not going to use any products, i.e. the application of that commonly held view, to me, that's where things are a little squirrely because I shouldn't, ex- and again, we're sort of talking ignorantly because, the re- and, and I think ignorantly is the, the only way anyone can talk about this is because there have been no courts, there has been no legal, actual deliberation of this issue, even to the take the idea of like the government limiting the rights and freedoms of anyone who doesn't take the vaccine. Well, go back to the government needs to prove that that is demonstrably justified. Well, when is those court cases going to happen? Years down the road or in you know, uh, Liberty Coalition Canada on their podcast announced they're going to sue one university. Why? Because they're trying, they're only doing one lawsuit because they want to take it all the way to the Supreme Court and set a precedent for the next time. Mm, mm. Right. And, and so this is where so much of this conversation, I think when it become, you know, for, for us, for the layman, there's a failure to really understand how systems that are there to protect our rights actually work and how they're actually going to play out. It's not because the human rights council put forth a statement or because, you know, Doug Ford passed a law or, or, you know, Trudeau from his podium as a dictator pronounced something to be true. Like that's not how our systems resolve these problems. No, that's mm-hmm. not to say that the, the, the system will, come and say, oh yes, this the government has violated your rights. And yes, we're gonna undo the the laws that they've done. Mm-hmm. That I'm not saying that that's the conclusion. The point is that actually finding out what the courts think is years of litigation away. And and so mm-hmm. um what I've I don't know our boy David Lynn actually apparently has had a lot of success <laughs> getting vaccine uh religious exemptions approved. He's been posting okay. them on his Instagram page of like okay. testimonials of being people being like, thank you so much. Mm. Um, mm. And, and so, but I think the, the issue with the religious exemption, if I'm not mistaken, this is a company issue, not the vaccine passport issue. Right. So if it, I, I mean, obviously we're talking in a very early stage of this and how things play out in the future. Is, is different. But if I understand correctly, let's, let's assume we're getting to the point of the QR codes issued by the government. The government is going to issue QR codes for medical exemptions, meaning I could go to a store, someone could scan my QR code and let me in because I have a government pre-approved medical exemption. I don't believe, and I could be wrong here, I don't believe they are going to be in the business of giving religious exemptions. The religious exemption is going to be with your employer who's put in a policy saying, oh, you need the vaccine. And now the religious exemption applies in that realm, not so much in the government QR code realm. Um, and then when it comes to, yeah, but but again, I, I'm speaking a little bit ignorantly because these systems have not yet been rolled out. We, we, we really only see it playing out at the employer level. Um, and and I would just say, you know, thinking about what we see with the liberals in the last five years, I'd be shocked if they give out any religious exemptions at all. So I, I, I yeah, I think, I think I'm go- going to be correct in my hypothesis that that religious exemption comes down to a let's call it individual company level, 
and not uh, the government QR code piece. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. I think. I think when I'm when I'm when I look at um the the statement, one of the things that stick out to me is <laughs> they um the person did their homework <laughs> who put this together. They they did their homework um in the sense that they made it difficult for Christian or for for um for any religion I should say to prove religious exemption. So so look at this phrase here. So to support an exemption based on creed or individual an individual must provide objective evidence that their claimed creed religion prohibits vaccination against COVID-19. And so what that means is that um, they want expli- uh, an explicit context. They want explicit text. Um, so if, so if, if you're not a religion of the book, <laughs> you're sunk, right? <laughs> but if, if, if you're a religion of a, of a book, then you would have to find an explicit text that prohibits you from vaccinations or maybe even COVID vaccinations. And so then the, 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 the second part, <laughs> they say, um, additionally, and this is applying to the subjective aspect of it, um, additionally, Personal preference or philosophical objection to uh, vaccination will not support an exemption. So it's just like I was saying before, right? Um, you have uh, the conviction aspect, the first part they talked about, the conviction, the objective um, proof that your religion is anti-vax. <laughs> Jesus was an anti-vaxer. <laughs> <laughs> type of thing <laughs> but then and then you have um but then you have the opinion of the personal philosophical preference which they're not going to acknowledge so so this is important because now it helps us to say okay well when we come to the text right when we're going to look at our text we're going to be like okay well can we meet meet these demands or these stipulations um but i i will also preface also that um as we're talking about the law aspect, um, we should also mention that um, this is from the Liberty um, Coalition page, and this was just a separate point I wanted to make, that it says, Christians and all Canadians are entitled to freedom of conscience and religion. Expression, thought, opinion, and, and belief as fundamental freedoms in Section 2 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So so with the legal part, there's the, there's the Constitution. So we heard what the government's saying. In whatever policy, but we have to remember that the Constitution is what guides our government um, in a sense of checks and balances. Now, I'll just preface and I'll say, well, it's not as good as um, the American Constitution and how and how it keeps their government in check, <laughs> their country in check. I'll, but that's that's a, that's a debate for another show. But I, I just want to just quickly, just for people who are listening, because I'm sure people are listening and they have their notepad and they're like, "Yo, come on, Joel and Darrell, give 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 me something to not get vaccinated." <laughs> So, so I'm gonna just quickly mention um, these um, these um, sections from the uh, Constitution. So, Section Two: Everyone has the following fundamental freedoms: freedom of religion, expression, peaceful assembly, and association. Section Seven: Everyone has the right to life, liberty, security of the person and the right not to be deprived, therefore, except in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice. And then section um, 15.1, every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination. You want to touch that, Joel Jeezy? Um, Yeah, that's... I mean, it's the, the, so I I would say my position is largely that actually that, that religious exemptions, medical exemptions, are you playing the game? What do you mean? So what you have read to me about, or what you have read sections two, seven, 15, one, and, and the constitution itself, uh, along with. Let's say um, 
the Canadian immunization rules and the essentially, and when I say Canadian immunizations, you're just going to have a hard time finding it. But in essence, um, the 1997 immunization in Canada law essentially says vaccines are not mandatory in Canada and you can't restrict anyone if they don't accept a vaccine. Whoa, 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 whoa. What you talking about, Willis? Wait, what? So I will, uh, <laughs> I'll put a link in the show notes page for um, We Are Essential. Uh, or uh, let me, it's uh, weareallessential.ca slash knowing your rights. I'll put it in the show notes page. Basically, there's a video. Uh, two videos where these guys went to Eaton Center and essentially used the law to tell the cop to go away when the cop was trying to kick them out for trespass because they didn't follow the vaccine passport law. And they were able to correct... Oh, it's, not, it's, it's not Chris Sky, is it? No, no, no. This is uh, okay. this guy, Vlad. <laughs> um, Vlad, okay. who's who's been part of We Are, Essen- we are All Essential. Okay, okay. I thought it yeah, was the incident no, no. with Chris so Sky, man. This, these guys are sitting there with the law demonstrating, oh, you're saying I'm trespassing? Well, here's the trespass law. And based on what this guy just said, I don't. that doesn't qualify as a trespass. Now, if you are a nuisance, while trying to stand on your rights, you could be considered a, under a trespass. But the point is, so I'll put this link in the show notes page, but the, the idea mm-hmm. here is that the way the laws are written today, enforcing the vaccine passports is essentially invalid. That is the position these guys are taking. And they're doing it by bringing the law so that when the cop shows up to try to enforce, they go, well, the law says you're not allowed to put a, a policy in place that violates what I was referring to before, which was the immunization legislation. So yeah, from uh, 1997 or May 1997, I'll try and find uh, probably a web archive link for this because I'm pretty sure the the document that I'm looking at is a picture and it says this document is currently offline since the start of COVID-19 pandemic. But anyways, the commentary in this, the third paragraph of immunization in Canada says, unlike some countries, immunization is not mandatory in Canada. It cannot be made mandatory because of the Canadian constitution. And only three provinces have legislation or regulations under health protection acts to require proof of vaccination for school entrance. And just for completeness, recognize that that uh, immunization records for the provinces can technically be exempt just by signing a document acknowledging that you don't have them. But the point is that it actually says all they're doing is just identifying, yes, we didn't do this on purpose, but it's... identifying that it's not mandatory and that if you actually try to hold someone compulsory to vaccinating, you're in violation of this law. And that's where, to me, the human rights is, is having a conversation. The human rights stuff is saying, oh, well, you didn't get exemption from the vaccine passport. But that goes back to where I said originally that the court systems haven't even deliberated whether the vaccine passport is in violation of the constitution or not. And and that's sort of more so my position on all of this, that in the name of safety, we are taking away rights in hopeful, I would say most people are hopeful that things will go back to normal. Mm-hmm. But if, uh, if I don't butcherize the quote, uh, Thomas Jefferson said, those who want safety, who, those who are willing to give up safety for their or sorry, those who are willing to give up liberty for their safety will have neither. Mm. And and so, as much as you know, uh, I think the religious exemption stuff might make sense for some people. Uh, to be honest, you know, my attitude is that do I really want to play the game? Right? Like, I think the vaccine passport itself is unconstitutional and immoral. So why would I want to get an exemption? To participate in that program, mm-hmm. yeah, you're gonna you're, you're gonna take your ball and go home. Yeah, I I mean my attitude is, and I said it on the show uh, last week. If my church starts requiring the vaccine passport, I'm going to another church. If if a restaurant is only going to serve takeout to the unvaccinated, uh, I'm not going to buy takeout from you. Like, why would I give you my business? 
Mm-hmm. And, and the reality is, I, I, I don't know if I said it on the show, but I've said it a bunch of times. The only way that that type of behavior really starts to make a difference is when the vaccinated who agree with us that this is a bad idea, they don't think it's wise, they need to take such actions. And, and mm-hmm. to some extent, we are seeing it, I think, a little bit. I mean, I know a lot of people who are like, who have messaged me and said, I got the first shot to protect grandma, but there's no way I'm taking boosters. Because, you know, they're, they're seeing what's going on. They think the passports are exceptionally stupid. Now, I, would, I haven't asked them specifically, but my question becomes, well, are you participating? Are you taking advantage of the, the freedoms that Justin Trudeau has given back to you? Or are you saying, this is stupid, I'm going to make the businesses who willingly uh, side with their abuser for the last year and a half <laughs> to pay more punishment? Okay. Well, okay. I, I mean, you're, you're laughing, but, but I honestly, that's how I see this. Businesses have been abused by government for a year and a half to the point where they have Stockholm syndrome or, or something like that where they're willing to abuse others to prevent them from being abused. Again, i.e., they think by doing the vaccine passports, we're going to prevent lockdowns, and we're going to prevent the government from telling me I can't run my business anymore. Right? It's, it's I want to prevent harm to me, so I'm willing to harm others. And, and I would argue it's out of ignorance and desperation, mm-hmm. but that's where the only way this, and, and this is what people have been saying from the beginning, the, the this stops when people say, say it stops. When the people stand up and go, no. And, and I don't know if you've seen, like in Europe, one of the things they did was they had a picnic protest. They would literally go in front of all the shops that were enforcing the vaccine passport. They would go have a picnic on the street and eat their own food in front of all these businesses. And actually, it's already happened in Calgary. One of them, some, they've, they've organized one of those already in Calgary. Please subscribe and hit the bell to stay up to date. If you liked or disliked the snippet, give it a like and share your two cents with us in the comment section. And remember, six cents makes change.